Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video recorded during the Early Access event. Thanks to Wizards of the Coast for letting me preview all the new cards from Phyrexia, all will be one. And as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, today we're taking a look at Atraxa Grand Unifier, the 7-mana, seven 7-7 seven, seven legendary Phyrexian Angel with Flying, Vigilance, Death Touch and Lifelink. And more importantly, when Atraxa enters a battlefield, we get to reveal the top 10 cards of our library, and then for each card type, we can reveal one of those cards and put it into our hand. Card type types include creatures, lands, planeswalkers, enchantments, artifacts, instant sorceries, and then there's a few more coming up apparently, so plenty of card types for Atraxa to reveal, and our deck has a pretty even spread between all these card types, so we can often reveal 5 or 6 cards when Atraxa enters the battlefield, which is quite powerful as it turns out. Now there's a lot of ways we could build around Atraxa, could play it in a reanimator deck where we try and cheat it into play so we don't have to cast it for 7 mana, instead I'm going with kind of a ramp control approach where we can generate extra mana with cards like Cartographer's Survey, which can find up to two lands in the top seven cards of our library and put them in play. That way we can maybe play Atraxa on the following turn already, and also just have more mana in play, so we can deploy all the extra cards we draw with Atraxa, because it's pretty important that we can actually cast all the extra cards we draw. Also have three copies of the Celestus for extra ramp and mana fixing. As it switches between day and night, we also get a bit of card selection, which is helpful at maybe discarding removal spells in matchups where we don't need them as much, so we can dig towards our finishers and find extra copies of Atraxa. And then Teferi also plays quite nicely with the Celestus, especially as we can untap it alongside a land with a plus one ability, maybe untap or tap a creature as well, and that can generate more mana to also help us ramp into our more expensive cards. And then we also have a few other Planeswalkers here from the new set. Vraska can be played for 5 mana and 2 life, in which case it enters with 4 loyalty as opposed to 6. And then the 0 ability lets us draw a card at the cost of 1 life, and we get to proliferate. So we can add extra loyalty counters to all our Planeswalkers, not only Vraska. So that's one way to get to the minus 9 ultimate, to put 9 poison counters on the opponent. So we can maybe close out the game with an additional proliferate, or maybe by attacking with our toxic creature, which we'll get to in a second. And then a minus 2, of course, the main mode of Raska, exile an opposing creature and turn it into a treasure. And then we also have two copies of the Eternal Wanderer, which we can play at 6 mana. Starts out at 5 loyalty, so we can use the minus 4 right away, which will make each player sacrifice all creatures, except for one, and we get to choose that one creature. In our case, we can keep our best one, like an Atraxa, and then the opponent will maybe be left with a smaller creature that we can handle pretty easily. The zero ability makes a double striking samurai, and the plus one can also be quite versatile. Can flicker our own creature to maybe get Atraxa's ETB effect again. Could also use it to get rid of an opposing creature, so it cannot attack us as it will only come back end of turn in the opponent's end step. So that's also quite useful. And then no more than one creature can attack the Eternal Wonder each turn. So it also makes it harder for the opponent to take out. And then we've got a couple of creatures besides Atraxa. Of course, can reveal a replacement Atraxa to the ETB effect, which is quite nice. But we also have two copies of Annex Sentry. Counts as both an artifact and a creature, so makes it much more likely that we can reveal it to Atraxa alongside another artifact or creature. And then it's a 1-4 with Toxic 1. So if it deals damage to the opponent, they get a poison counter. So it can maybe help us close out the game after we minus 9 Vraska. And then it's a creature that when it enters can exile an opposing artifact or creature an opponent controls with mana value 3 or less until it leaves the battlefield. So it gives us a cheap blocker that can hold off smaller creatures as well as give us some removal, which is quite useful. And then we also have a one-off copy of Glissa, Sunslayer, just a nice source of card advantage on a 3-3 with First Strike and Death Touch, so it makes it very difficult for the opponent to attack into. And if we ever connect with it, we can either draw, destroy an enchantment, or maybe remove counters of permanence, which includes Planeswalkers as well. And then we also have a one-off copy of Thrun, Breaker of Silence, which is always a ton of fun when facing control decks. Cannot be countered, a 5-5 Trampler, and then it also cannot be the target of non-green spells your opponents control, or abilities from non-green sources. So not a ton of ways to take it out with spot removal, and as long as it's our turn, Thrun is indestructible, so we can still maybe wipe the board with our Path of Peril with its 6 mana cleave cost, and still keep our creature around. Path of Peril also very useful against some of the aggressive poison token decks, which can make a lot of small creatures, in which case we can cast it for 3 mana to destroy creatures with mana value 2 or less, which doesn't affect any of our creatures except for maybe our tokens 
games from our wonder and then at six mana we can cleave it and we can ramp into it with survey and celestus even teferi can set that up so we can wipe the board against aggro and then we've got more cheap spot removal including three copies of cut down which we can also play after playing celestus got three copies of a go for the throat as well as a leyline binding which i ambitiously put in the two drop slot but that's because we have four different basic land types to discount the binding down to two mana could even play some off color tri lands to discount it down to a single white but for two mana it's already good enough and then we've got our tower and headquarters which have three basic land types so great alongside binding as well as hideouts and storefronts which can fetch up a basic so that's additional mana fixing to make sure we have all our colors sorted since we do need some double black early for path of peril for instance so the mana base is kind of tricky to work out ended up playing a lot of basics as well to fetch up with our fetch lands so i'm not playing any of the channel lands which we could otherwise play instead and then we've got some additional removal with soul transfer can exile creatures or planeswalkers as well as maybe get a creature or planeswalker back from our graveyard to our hand so we can recycle our track if it maybe got dealt with and if we happen to have both an artifact and an enchantment we get to choose both modes instead of having to pick one and yeah that should cover most of it here we've got death cap glade and sanctum as additional dual lands that produce black for an early path of peril and the other spot removal spells while being untapped later in the game of course since early on a lot of our lands do come into play tapped so the deck can be a little slow to get going which is one of the weaknesses of course of this type of strategy so that's our deck now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the play and seems keepable and then sequencing I guess I wouldn't be able to get a black source early, so headquarters is fine. And double white, probably the most important here. Opponent red green. A loom speaker. So, could go for the throw to prevent an early Haluka. Uh, Celestus, about as good as just playing Survey next turn if we hit our land drop for Atraxa on turn 5. So let's just uh, prevent the early ramp. Alright, Fable on 3, always powerful. But now with an untapped land, we'll be able to play Atraxa, assuming we hit two lands of Survey, which we did. All right, let's see if Atraxa can uh, get it done. Titan discarded, so it could also be a creativity style of deck. All right, it's going to be a Nissa. Can blow up artifacts and enchantments. Makes a beast. Oh, still liking Atraxa here. And find lots of goodies. Backup Atraxa is always good to have. Over Thrun, definitely a close call. Uh, then Path as our Sweeper, Eternal Wonder as our Planeswalker. We've got Sentry as our Artifact. And then Untapped Land. And a Cutdown. Okay. We'll have to discard to hand size a bit. Celestus maybe at this point. And a Land. So we don't have a clean answer to Nissa yet, but Eternal Wanderer should be quite effective if Atraxa can attack Nissa here. So that's probably step one. Big score and response. And then Eternal Wanderer can leave them with Maybe a 4-4 token or a shaman. And then I could still cut it down. So I guess that works. Opponent knows about cut down, of course. And yeah, opponent has seen enough. We can clear their entire board, still have an Atraxa left over and a ton of extra card advantage. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands definitely on the slow side. 
So it could be a mulligan. Sure. All right, this is a little bit better. And then what to get rid of? This can grab a forest, so with Celestus we would have double green for Thrun. If I grab a forest, binding is still kind of on the pricey side, so maybe we prefer Vraska. The rest, pretty good. Can take Celestus, make it hard to cast the Thrun. Although now with the survey, we just need a fourth land. Opponent mono black. I guess we'll keep up cut down. And uh, Glissa sadly does not die to cut down. So that's gonna hit us at least twice. A misery Shadow we can cut down, although they can pump it twice in response, so it doesn't actually work. Alright, go for the throat, it's a better answer. So do you want to kill Glissa and then uh, keep cut down for Shadow, or do we ramp with a survey, take another hit, and try and answer stuff next turn? Having more mana would be useful, although we're pretty likely to be able to take out Misery's Shadow with cut down here if our opponent taps out. So we'll pass. Alright, I guess I'll have to take two from Shadow. Maybe finish it off end of turn. Opponent tapping very carefully for a Flesh Gorger. Still keeps up two mana for Shadow. Okay, so no cut down. Path of Peril. Well, can maybe cast it for six next turn. So we'll take a beating, but then hopefully stabilize. And Obliterator, not surprised. Opponent with a mix of black and green for fight effects, but a Path of Peril gonna clean things up nicely. Another Obliterator, we can try and exile with Vraska. Don't really want to take five. If I play Thrun, they can still target it with green fight effects, which would be a disaster. So play Vraska, hope there's no protection spell. Alright, Obliterator is now a treasure. Still a fine trade. Obliterator number three. Okay, getting a little nervous now. Since playing Thrun into a fight effect would not be a good time. I guess I could go Celestus into Survey. And then we can maybe use Celestus to find answers. Storefront to gain one. Probably worth it here. Okay, I'll hang on to Tower. So the third Obliterator might get us. Celestus gets to loot. Cut down doesn't seem incredibly helpful at the moment. Might still need the extra mana. Especially if we cycle tower, draw another one. Okay, so cycle first or Celestus first. I guess cycling is a little cheaper. Find a Glissa. That one's not as much of a disaster if they fight it, but I imagine they'll have some other spot removal in hand too. So I could still activate Celestus and then play Glissa if we don't find a better answer. Storefront, not quite. 
Okay. Show me what you've got. Opponent cycles proving ground. And do we see some author removal? So far so good. At this point they can just skip the fight and attack. And then I'll sacrifice a couple lanes. Undying Malice first. Well, in that case... Our opponent's probably planning to fight second main phase. But at least I force them to use the fight effect. If we take it. Yeah, opponent's definitely all in on the Obliterator plan. So we're gonna lose a couple lanes. Obliterator comes back. We'll need to find a different answer. Tower's not it. So cycle, four mana left. Yeah, we're not gonna have many outs. Well, binding's one of them. Finally. So we'll pass, let it go to knights. Get rid of the cutdown. Sentry is probably more useful, although it's hard to say. Can maybe exile a Misery Shadow. So we found an answer at last. Obliterator down, so there's one left in the deck. Hopefully we don't have to see it, but a Flash Gorger. I guess we go to one if we exile with Sentry. And I don't have the mana to play both creatures out. Although the pause is somewhat concerning here. That worked. And we'll play out the headquarters, I think. Could still loot with the Celestis, just to improve our hand slightly. Should have done that before playing land. Alright, didn't need survey anyway. Okay, so we're not dead yet. Would be a great time to top deck Atraxa. Underdog Blitz, we can block. There could be a second main fight effect to finish off Sentry, but they probably just want to draw. Another binding is good insurance. Okay, let's get thrown in play. And Sentry could probably start attacking. They're far from blitzing double underdog. And don't expect Thrun to get removed. Could also exile the underdog, although maybe keeping binding as an answer to another obliterator is safer. And we can turn the corner pretty quickly too here. Now I guess another duress would punish me for not playing the binding. So now activate Celestis. And then just attack with Thrun, keeps Sentry back to block Underdog. And I should keep a land in hand to maybe discard to Celestis. Bone and Blitzes again, down to 8. Underdog dies. So yeah, not sure what their hand is like. Probably some removal that they cannot play. The ferry to the rescue. Can gain us some life back, as well as untap Thrun. So 
So let's see. Can play the fairy, activate Celestus, untap Celestus, and still keep up Leyline Binding. At this point, Tower might be better than Glade, in case I want to cycle it. Okay, pass it back. Opponent at 2, so they can no longer Blitz Underdog. And our opponent explodes, wow, from the brink of death, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play here with a decent hand. Celestus for a bit of mana fixing. Set up a turn for Thrun, binding for interaction. And then we have four basic land types, so we can cast it for two mana. And Hideout probably wants to get another white source. And then Celestus plus Cutdown is an option next turn. Opponent blue-white so far. And we get to loot. Well, I imagine Cutdown can go. And we'll give uh, Thrun a try. Cannot be countered, so should be good against control. Depopulate can still get it. Opponent passes, and we'll attack. Probably activate Celestus, just to get rid of some removal, which appears to be dead. Opponent with a Deluge to draw. Okay. Now at 6 mana, they could also have a Farewell to Exile, both Celestus and Thrun. So that's certainly a concern here. I want to try and find some of our Planeswalkers or Atraxa, as always. Okay, discard a Go for the Throats. Play Tapped Headquarters. And we'll loot again. And now maybe Path of Peril can go. Keep the instant speed, Go for the Throats. Although I could see Path being useful if our opponent's playing the White Twilight, which can make a bunch of 1-1 tokens. Sure. Urza? Okay. Slightly regretting discarding and go for the throat now, although Binding can still exile it. Could also cast a 6 mana Path of Peril, which Thrun will survive in our turn. And there's Atraxa. Step 1 attack. Now, Pun does still have Counterspell mana available. So I could see the advantage of casting a survey, developing our mana, and hope to play Atraxa when they're tapped out to answer Thrun. Okay, hit a tower and hideout seems fine. And then I'll hang on to Leyline Binding to maybe play it instant speed. Don't want to play it now into a potential farewell. Mightstone and Weakstone cannot target Thrun, so they're gonna have to draw instead. So end of turn, probably try and exile Urza. Bait out a response. And then... Atraxa hopefully gets to refuel. Urza attacks. I'll take two. Don't think the damage matters. And then now we'll binding. And our opponent counters. Alright, now they're tapped out and Atraxa is good to go. 
cut down can go since it doesn't answer Urza. Smash. And our trucks up. Let's see what we get. Opponent kills it in response. That's fine. Still get the trigger, which finds a lot of goodies. Glissa is our creature. We've got soul transfer to maybe get back Atraxa as our sorcery. Binding enchantments. And then Celestus artifacts. And probably want an untapped land here. Okay, and then how about a Glissa? Could also play it more conservatively, pass with Binding and Clue Token available. Since our opponent can of course now transform Urza. So in response to the transformation we can Binding. Alright, let's do that instead. Could get punished by a Counterspell. But we'll uh, find out soon. Alright, that worked, and we made them waste their entire turn. And our opponent explodes. Awesome, Thrun goes the distance. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand is keepable. Between green and white, what do we prefer? We can always play Celestus to set up the green if we're on the ramp strategy, but if we need to answer a creature, getting the white is probably a bit more important. And then uh, we can play a sentry on three at least. Okay, opponent on a controlling proliferate deck. And there's our green, so now we can play sentry. And then next turn still survey to ramp into Atraxa. Opponent counters. And now we could Celestus and cut down before they get a third counter, which is kind of the critical turning point in a lot of situations. That resolved swiftly. I guess we'll put an upkeep stop. Just in case. Alright, get to loot with Celestus. And one survey can probably go now. So you could play around another Bring the Ending by playing Untapped Land first. And then survey to set up Atraxa, skip Wander. And uh could just get the try lines since I didn't necessarily want to shuffle. Okay, time for Atraxa. Although, once again, we could play around the counter spell by playing Wanderer and then next turn Atraxa. Probably worth it. Make a token. Vraska's Fall does get rid of Planeswalkers. Opponent does now have three poison counters on us. So yeah, we could still be in a bit of trouble. Their hand is all action. So if this Atraxa doesn't resolve, that's bad. Hopefully they just play hybrid. Okay, good. We can exile that so it doesn't come back. And then Atraxa has a pretty good last card to have. Might as well loot. Alrighty, what do we like? Probably grab Vraska as our Planeswalker of choice. And then Sentry as our only creature. Still have Celestus as artifact, cut down instant. And I'll go for the untapped land. And then, uh, yeah, that's probably it. We'll cycle tower. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, just a little bit too far behind. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems keepable. Sequencing our mana. Probably want to get a swamp in case we need to cut down early, and then the next one can get a plains. And then we'll have a slightly cheaper binding. Now that we drew white mana, I could get an island instead. Opponent Esper with a Faithful Mending, so maybe a Reanimator deck. And yeah, those are definitely cards worth reanimating. Okay, Headquarters. This comes Binding a bunch, although I don't have the white mana to cast it right now. Okay, we'll give uh, Survey a shot. Opponent flashes back Mending, so you can expect something to bring it back on turn 5. Ooh, only one land. Let's take a look at what's gone here. Bunch of removal, so it could have been worse. Yeah, Survey doesn't have a 100% hit rate, unfortunately. Now I can Celestus plus Survey. Or we could try and keep a Binding as an instant speed answer. Although Portal doesn't bother me when I don't have any creatures in play anyways, so... Celestas into Survey seems fine. And now we hit a couple lanes. A lot of Planeswalkers going to the bottom, so I wouldn't mind shuffling. So I'll grab a tower and... Gotta make sure we have enough basics left since we have a bunch of swamps. I guess we'll be able to grab the forest with hideouts. And then we have planes left, which we can fetch with all the fetch lanes. So let's just get rid of Sanctum, since we can at least cycle headquarters. Cutdown's gonna be pretty poor, so we can uh, activate Celestas as well. Okay. I guess we cycle tower, and then make sure we keep a binding. And then if we had an unsapped land, I can still cycle headquarters. Okay, there we go, Atraxa is what we wanted. Now I'm probably fine playing out the land since we might need a lot of mana once we resolve Atraxa. And don't need another Celestus. Okay, opponent's playing passively, don't mind that. And then if Atraxa gets countered, we can still soul transfer it back at least. But uh, Atraxa resolves. And what do we like? Backup Atraxa. Binding has our enchantment. Vraska, Planeswalker. Sentry as our artifact. Path, Sorcery. And Glade as our land. Draw six. Don't mind if I do. And uh, can play Glade. And then keep up double binding. Probably don't need path, actually. Okay. So now they're gonna go for a sweeper first. At least we still draw off Atraxa. And we should cycle headquarters. Okay. Do we want to get a Vraska down? which is a little harder for the opponent to interact with, and definitely don't need more card advantage at the moment. So, played for six, sure. And we'll try and poison our opponent to death with ultimate. Can play Sanctum. And then discard. Maybe a go for the throats. Although a sentry is also probably not at its best here. Triple binding should be quite effective in the matchup. Just gotta make sure we don't end up decking. But uh, yeah, we'll cycle tower. It's a 
Fairy can make some more mana. So player Planeswalker before proliferating with Vraska. And then I guess activate Vraska before deciding what to do with Teferi. And a backup. Yeah, we'll plus. Don't think I need to play another Atraxa. Could activate Celestis. And our opponent has seen enough. Yeah, we've got all the answers in hand at this point, and we're very close to ultimating Vraska to just poison our opponent to death. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand could use a bit of ramp, missing green mana. So if we draw a survey, we won't be able to cast it, but don't think I can turn down some nice cheap removal. And Atraxa, definitely a card we want to work towards. Okay, turn on Defector Might. I'm happy to take out... Hopefully they don't have the enchantment on two duelists. We can still go for the throat. Try and stem the bleeding a bit. If the 4-4 Trampler shows up, I might regret it, but uh, so far so good. And then now, probably still one tower for blue mana. Duelist not as scary as some of the other creatures. And there's our green mana, so now we're capable of casting Survey. And we've got the lands to eventually cast Wanderer and Atraxa. Ooh, Contaminator, that's a scary one. Another Atraxa, powerful card, but not what we need right now. Although now I don't mind if our opponent plays a bunch more creatures out, since we can minus the Eternal Wanderer. Up to five poison, opponent passes. Could also plus one on the contaminator or make a samurai. Plusing, I don't mind. We'll remove it from play for a while. All right. Have a nice trip. And then next turn we'll be able to run out Atraxa as a great blocker. But yeah, if our opponent had Skrelv's Hive going off in the meantime, it would have been very bad. Uh oh Double Homestead Courage. Alright, so we're taking four here. Got a few options when it comes to the Wanderer. Play Atraxa first and then we can decide. Okay. Binding is our enchantment, sentry our creature. And then we've got another planeswalker, sorcery, untapped land, and artifact. Not bad. And then we could minus four wanderer, let them keep the duelists. Get rid of contaminator. Might be safer than uh, just making a samurai. Okay. And we can discard a couple lands here. Alright, big turn coming up. Can our opponent get 6 damage in or 4 poison? They cannot, understandably, and they concede. Awesome. So yeah, Atraxa definitely delivered in these games. And I think being able to ramp into Atraxa and then have a lot of mana to leverage the extra cards makes a bit more sense than playing Atraxa in a reanimator shell, even though that could also be very effective. But just having more mana to then deploy all the extra cards is a bit more natural than trying to cheat Atraxa into play, but then not being able to cast all the spells you draw from it. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.